does that mean? We <laughs> technically don't. What else? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But after decades of gun violence, guns and trading, and human trafficking with tremendous strides in technology for identifying, tracking, and sanctioning perpetrators of related crime, this treaty is actually not good enough. My comments are here to help build and strengthen this treaty and to make it more robust. As a parliamentarian advocate with PGA, I recognize the efforts of several years of consultation leading up to this arms treaty. However, I would like to record my disappointment with what appears to be a somewhat weak and ineffective draft submission. This treaty cannot propose political expediency but remain to a large extent legally inadequate as far as clear definitions, enforcement and compliance are concerned. This draft reflects a politically balanced neutrality too far with sanitized terms and somewhat vague language. The crisis uh, is interconnected with the arms trade. In Syria, now 45% of the population are composed is, uh, of minorities. It is easy to foster the crisis in those areas. And this is causing also an increase in the imports of arms. Unless we regulate the illicit trade, or unless we regulate uh, the, uh, to limit uh, the imports of arms, we cannot reach the peace. The treaty may not be strong or robust. Trust me, in countries such as mine, it is a stepping stone. It's very important that we come together and get something put on paper, then we can work on it. It's very important to us in Africa, especially in Ghana. If the arms treaty requires a little tweaking, that you can shift the power brokering just a little, that's the step I think we need. This arms treaty is crucial for all the states, but it is even more crucial for small states and exploited states. Exploited states and small states are simply pawns. Uh, we are pawns in a lot of the, in, in the game. <clears throat> and too often, when you have loopholes, the loopholes are being pointed out even as we speak. We're not going to see a significant uh, change in governments um, uh, selling uh, arms to other governments or shipments of arms uh, going to particular conflicts uh, where agreements have been made, whether international or bilateral. But what it will mean, that in the first instance, they are, it's more transparent, it is more traceable, it is, uh, has to be matched against uh, new and exacting criteria. Uh, and then secondly, uh, after that war or that conflict is over, hopefully, as a result of a, su a substantive treaty this week, uh, the secondary use of those weapons by the new government or the existing government or fighting groups within that country it will be far more difficult for them to use with impunity and without that traceability and tracking.